Candidates have different approaches uh, to preparation, as Arlette was just saying. Donald Trump is known as a freestyler. He just likes to go it his own way. And as we saw with Hillary Clinton four years ago, that can often be crude, rude and vulgar. However, the White House press secretary says the president is ready. The president has had a few prep sessions with Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Governor Chris Christie. Um, this morning, he'll be making his way out over to Ohio here in the afternoon, uh, getting ready those last minute preparations. But really, what the president does is prepare each and every day. When he takes grueling questions from the White House press corps, uh, he is the most pre transparent president in history. Uh, and he's had more preparation than anyone just on the day to day basis of doing his briefings, his gaggles, and other forms of questioning. Now, Joe Biden is a more traditionalist in the way he goes about things, as you heard, with long uh, amounts of preparation held by the team, which included the former Michigan, uh, Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, stood in as Sarah Palin during Biden's 2008 debate preparations, also stood in as Elizabeth Warren in uh, Biden's debate preparations earlier this year. Uh, the former governor is with me now. Jennifer Granholm is with me now from Oakland, California. Thank you, uh, Madam Governor. Um, so, uh, where, first of all, how do you imagine he is going to be preparing the vice president, but at the same time recognising he doesn't want to become so enmeshed in detail that the bombast of the president overwhelms. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, is that you have to recognise you've got two minutes to answer a question. What are the most important things you want to get out that the, you want the people to hear? It's not a candidate who spends all of his time, for example, fact-checking his opponent is not talking to the voters who he wants to convey his plan to. He, it should be about them and not necessarily about Donald Trump, unless it's a contrast that's very important to the people. So, for example, on health care, I mean, it's really important to people that they have access to health care. And Joe Biden has got to let people know that this Supreme Court pick, for example, could take away millions of people's health care. So it's a, it's, a, it's a balance, but you don't want to spend all of your time in the weeds. You want to address the most important things, and you do not want to be the fact checker in chief. And that's the danger here, isn't it? Because the, the, president, um, the president will issue an enormous number of facts about Biden's position on health care, on wanting to defund police, uh, for example, on uh, foreign affairs. He will want to paint Joe Biden as so far left as communist. And Biden either lets it go or he has to rebut. What's the best strategy? Yeah, I think, first of all, when you said he's going to be issuing a lot of facts, the president is not going to be issuing a lot of facts. There will be a lot right. of lies that he says. And so I think it's Joe Biden, <laughs> important for Joe Biden to state at the outset Objective fact checkers have found that you have issued 22,000 lies since you've been president. By the right. end of this debate, it will be 22,050. So that was just another one. Here's the truth. Here's my plan. So I think that you've got to set from the outset that you know there's going to be lies coming from the president and then go forward and talk about your plan. But what about the, 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 the fact that Joe Biden very clever man that he is and extremely experienced he works best in small groups with a much more folksy image which is true but he is hardly a smooth orator and his ability to trip over his own sentences does give the appearance of grandpa who's adult um i think that you'll see a very focused Joe Biden tonight. What you saw in the primaries, for example, when he's on stage with 10 of his family members, if you will, is a much different scenario than when he's one-on-one. -on -one. So for example, he was one-on-one -on -one with um, Bernie Sanders and he did really well. It's also really different when you are one-on-one -on -one with an adversary, with someone whose values you fundamentally disagree with. That gets you focused in a way that taking incoming from people who largely you agree with does not do.
So this is going to be a different scenario. He's prepared, he's ready, and he's going to be good. How do you handle, how would you suggest handling the fact that you are debating the President of the United States, so there has to be an element of due deference to that post, but at the same time, he is no longer the President, he is a political candidate, and therefore, fair game for all. Yeah, I think ha they have to be seen as equals on this stage. You respect your opponent no matter mm. whether they're challenger or whether they're in office. You have to demonstrate that respect for the office. However, if Donald Trump is stating lies that are not that that are themselves not worthy of respect, you have to knock them right. down. You have to be able to go to bat for people and not allow his office to dissuade you from from attacking. If you've got to attack, attack. Right. Now, come on, Governor. A bit of a, a bit of soul searching here tonight. Having done, having been involved in his prep, will you be on the edge of your seat watching, yes. screaming <laughs> at the television? No, don't say that. No, we told you to say. Oh, oh, hang on, he's getting there. I mean, what do you do when you're watching the prepped person perform? Well, let's just be clear. I didn't prep him for this debate. I prepped him in the primary. Right. So, but nonetheless, I sure am going to be on the edge of my seat like everybody else. But I'll tell you something, Richard. I do not think, honestly, based upon the polls that have come out in the past week, I'm just not sure that the debates themselves are going to make a heck of a yeah. lot of difference. There's only between mm. three to seven percent of people who are still undecided. Yeah. And in the, the battleground states, that number is narrower. So I'm just not sure how much this, I mean, it's going to be entertaining, but I'm not sure how much in the end it will move people. Uh, Governor, uh, great to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll you talk bet. more, of course, as this whole process goes on. So